I am Dr. Anna Blakeney. My name is Anthony Gordon. So I'm, I'm Graham Cook. My name is Kai Hu. My name is Leo McFarlane. Hi, I'm Sonia Saxena. My name is Dr. Paul Mackay. During this whole pandemic, one of the things that's been really eye-opening for me is um, kind of just how exciting it is to be in science and be kind of on the forefront of vaccine discoveries. As a clinical academic, I've had to uh, look after critically ill patients in the intensive care unit, and that has been a, a real challenge, uh, looking after patients with this novel disease. And then at the same time, I've been leading uh, one of the clinical trials, trying to develop uh, optimal therapies. And so juggling uh, both aspects has been a real challenge, but also um, has taught me a lot about how lucky I am uh, to have a job that I enjoy doing so much. Positivity is something that really has pushed me through and quite a few of my colleagues to do the work that is necessary to produce a vaccine. Some of the supplies that we reached, um, we had very large masks. Now everyone in my practice is uh, almost exclusively a small woman. Uh, and so uh, the local ladies from the mosque uh, stitched us these beautiful masks that fitted perfectly. Um, the, the kindness of the community, of friends, of family um, has just been unparalleled during this time. Well, I can work even harder than I thought I could work because we have been, as a joint group effort, we have been working literally 24-7 for, for many, many months. Uh, without a break, without the possibility of holidays. Um, and we can come together as a team, even though science, of course, is a competitive endeavour, um, it's also a collaborative endeavour. Um, I have found my children have been slightly more tolerant of me. Um, early on in March, we sat them down and said, look, you know, we're not going to be around much. It's going to be busy and they've sort of stepped up. But I think I do feel that they perhaps respect a little bit more about this weird job that I've been doing. Um, so there have been some positives around that, but obviously tinged with the recognition that really that's all because of the terrible you know, burden of disease that we've been having to grapple with and how you know any success we might see in research in this country is a consequence of having so many cases. So it's, uh, it's difficult to be too positive about it all. I think this is the very first time I feel like what I have learned is very useful. I feel like I'm important to the society now. Like before, I mean, I'm just like a person in the world. Now I feel like I'm one of those important people in the world. <laughs> For the first time since I've been a consultant specialist, at the beginning I wasn't sure what to do. Um, I was trying to provide patients with the best care but surprises kept happening. We hadn't seen this disease before and I came home I remember a few times thinking I don't know if I've done the right thing at work. Um, it was difficult. Uh, patients were behaving very differently to other diseases and that was difficult as a you know, senior member of clinical team people come to me for answers. There's definitely a lot of pressure and expectation. You know, most scientists, like their ultimate dream is to work on a technology um, or medicine or something that would potentially have an, a positive impact on human health, right? And so being able to work on a vaccine um, in this pandemic, I think has just been such a cool opportunity for all of us that it's really a privilege to be in this position um, as opposed to, you know, stressful. As it's unprecedented times, it's just the, the not knowing. Is what I'm doing really gonna make a massive impact? Is it the case where I'm exposing myself to the virus, like it's just all these, all these questions come into your head. And then on top of that, the workload has been completely crazy. So no one really can relate apart from other healthcare or key workers. So both my children volunteered straight away to help and we became an NHS family. Even my son, who's not medical, was delivering medicines for our pharmacy and spending time in the community helping. Uh, and I think that that has been a real leveller, the fact that we were all able to rise to the occasion and become part of the community uh, and, and help people. Um, it's, it's been a, a real uh, 
um, source of strength. I think the only thing I've done differently um, is I've taken up cycling. I think, you know, it was a particularly stressful time and uh, trying to, particularly on the clinical front, trying to just escape uh, uh, during a period of national lockdown was quite important to me. So I ended up, you know, like middle-aged men buying a bit of lycra. But, you know, that's, um, that's something I've done to cope. I think the first few months are not going to be very different to 2020. I think we are, we're not out of the woods yet, um, but at, um, at the risk of mixing my metaphors now, I think there is light at the end of the tunnel. Beforehand, you know, there was, there's never been an approved RNA vaccine before because it's a relatively new technology. So to see two of the first candidates um, that are RNA vaccines and be so effective is really great. I think it's just totally going to change the way that we make vaccines in the future. Feeling very much more optimistic, really. I mean, I think we shouldn't underestimate the challenges that are ahead of us, you know, not least in rolling out a vaccine to 50, 60 million people in, in due course. But obviously that has started. And I think that really does suggest that come April, there'll be times that, um, that, that things will be changing. And, I, you know, I very much hope that we're going to see much less restriction. I've got a summer holiday booked last year that's been deferred to this year and I'm very much hoping I can get on it. I think one of the most important things that seems to have come out of this period is a real focus on the structural problems that we have in society. Part of that story has been the, the really tragic uh, toll that um, Covid has taken on minorities that are disadvantaged and a realisation about the circumstances in which people are operating and the valuable role that they play in society. It's, it's a really human story and I really hope that we can learn to value what we need to value.